All right, here we are. UFC 129. First up, crappy advertisement for this card. It's the first card in Toronto, which is huge. I'm not going to be there, and it destroys me a little bit inside. Just a little bit. Did go to the first show in Windsor, though. Uh, the Windsor Caesars. That being said, uh, well, okay, let, let's get let's get the let's get the talk about how they're promoting this card off my chest. I don't understand why the UFC has to bring up certain things when they're hyping up a contender that, if you really look at, don't actually hype the fighter. And what I mean is, Jake Shields is being really hyped up, and, and they have to um, hype him, but they could have chosen things better. Like, they're talking about his destruction of Mayhem Miller in um, the hype-up videos, and it's like, uh, if you really think about that, Mayhem's fought both these guys. He wants a rematch with Shields. He doesn't want a rematch with GSP. That's all you need to know. You really don't need to bring up Mayhem Miller without making Shields look weaker. And they're also bringing up the Okami and Condit in one night, which on paper sounds great, except that you watch the Okami fight and you're like, how did Jake Shields win this fight? Anyways, that's it. Rant over. Into the picks. Facebook portion of the card. We have, if this thing will go down, Pablo Garza versus Yves Jaboyne. Going with Jaboyne uh, via second or third round TKO. I believe that his stand-up is just better on the speed, technical, and explosive level. Garza's stand-up, pretty bad. Garza's wrestling, not terribly great. Garza's ground game, probably better than Jaboyne's, which doesn't really say much. But I don't see him being able to get him to the ground frequently enough to avoid the punishment from Jaboyne's strikes. And he is not going to flying knee him like he did Fritz and Beckshaw. That's all there is to that. John McGessy versus Kyle Watson. Kyle Watson is a, a, a guy I'm very happy he's getting a shot in the UFC. He's a guy that I was, was wondering why he didn't have a shot in the UFC for the longest time. That being said, I think he lacks the wrestling to really go far in the UFC in general, which is weird because he trains with a hit squad, but this, that's one of those things that, and Milicic camp was a lot like this, where like guys just didn't pick up certain skills. And I guess that's the proof that you know, no matter what camp you're at, there's just certain things you never get the hang of. Um, and uh, Kyle Watson would be, I guess, the example of that for wrestling. But I guess he's not a spectacular wrestler by any means, but he does a pretty good job of uh, a counter wrestling and keeping it on the feet. And I, he's much quicker, much more technically sound than Kyle Watson on the feet. I see him just blasting away to a unanimous decision. I say decision because uh, McDessie doesn't seem to have the greatest stopping power in the world. The fight that breaks my soul to have to break down. Ryan Jensen, Jason McDonald. My thoughts on both these fighters, well known. That being said, I'm going with J-Mac. Why? While Ryan Jensen is a stronger wrestler, J-Mac seems to be able to get stronger wrestlers to the ground. And Ryan Jensen is very, very prone to getting submitted. And while he has better stand-up, I don't see him knocking out McDonald. McDonald's a reasonably tough guy to knock out. And Ryan Jensen's not exactly a knockout artist. He's got good speed, he's got good kicks, got good punches, but he doesn't seem to uh, you know, come in there and just say, I'm going to walk through you, bam, 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 and you're out. He doesn't do that. And I think McDonald gets him to the ground at some point. First or second round. Submission. Possibly by guillotine. I'm going to go with that. Maybe the modified guillotine he likes to use. Ivan Menjavar versus Charlie Valencia. Tough fight to call. On one hand, you have the more well-rounded fighter in Menjavar. On the other hand, you have the smaller but better wrestler in Charlie Valencia. More athletic guy. Going to go with Valencia just because, well, Menjavar does have a size advantage, I think. I mean, the man has fought as high as 170, whereas, Menj whereas Valencia should really fight 125. I see him being able to wear, or I see him being able to uh, take down 
Ivan Menjavar and take a unanimous decision. I don't really see him finishing him in any way. I think on the feet he can hang with him as well, so that, you know, maybe a sprawl and brawl even tactic. There, unanimous decision, Charlie and Valencia. Daniel Roberts versus Claude Patrick. This is honestly a flip a coin fight. I feel these two fighters are just so ridiculously close. They're both very well rounded. I give Patrick the nod in the stand up. I give Roberts the nod in the wrestling and on the ground. I almost honestly think this is kind of a wash. I'm going to go with Daniel Roberts because, generally speaking, better wrestling trumps better striking if the ground games are very similar. And that's kind of how I see this fight is. Um, Patrick's not really a one-hitter quitter kind of guy. He's not a guy who's just going to knock you out. And I think Daniel Roberts can get him to the ground and control him. I don't think he finishes him, and he takes a unanimous decision against the hometown boy. On to the spike portion of the card. Sean Pierce and Jake Ellenberger going with Jake Ellenberger by decision, but but an asterisk there. He's a late-minute replacement, and it's always a bit weird to take the late-minute replacement. And if he does not come prepared, Sean Pearson is a very game opponent, very well-rounded opponent, and he can take advantage of Ellenberger's uh, lackadaisicalness, I guess. That being said, Ellenberger better stand up, better ground game, uh, and, and very, very good wrestling. And that's just a recipe for disaster. I got him by unanimous decision, but who knows, cardio could be a problem, he may not be fully prepared, so this fight is a little more interesting than it, you know, bodes out to be on paper. Nate Diaz versus Rory McDonald. Rory McDonald is coming off a long layoff, which um, is concerning. The last time out, he was beating Carlos Condit up until um, gassing out a bit, and also just making some questionable uh, questionable moments in that fight for him. Decision making, hopefully he's matured to where he can take his decision making to the next level. I think he has the better wrestling than Nate Diaz. I think he has the better technical stand up, although Nate Diaz is rangy and uh, probably will have a reach advantage. This is a really tough, this is one of the tougher fights on the card to, to, card to call. I'm going to go with Roy McDonald by unanimous decision. I don't think he finishes a Diaz brother. Uh, I, I very rarely, if ever, have picked a Diaz brother to actually get finished. I see him being able to take down Nate enough and controlling him while they're there without getting subbed. That being said, Nate, Diaz brothers will submit people that they really shouldn't off their backs, and maybe that's this is one of those cases. On to the main card, Mark Bocek, Ben Henderson. Ben Henderson, I think, is the better all-around athlete. Uh, better stand-up, better wrestling. Bocek is better on the ground, but Henderson's got that. There is no such thing as an unsubmittable fighter, but Ben Henderson has got to be about as close, lightweight-wise, to unsubmittable as possible. He's been caught in a ridiculous number of chokes and also... Uh, arm locks and has not tapped and that's kind of you know Boshek's only hope is to catch him in something and and tap him problem is I just don't I don't see that happening well Bochek is the most dangerous guy off his back uh, we've seen him face he's not horrendously dangerous off his back it's he's more of a top game guy and we've seen repetitively in the past if a guy can't get top game and he's a top game guy he has a very hard time, and that's that's what I say with this Henderson fight. And uh, I'm going with uh, Benson Smooth Henderson by unanimous decision. Randy Couture, Leota Machida. Well, I think people who are picking Randy are somewhat insane. It does bear to be said, Randy Couture is a guy you never ca count out. He defies the odds so much. It's just insane. What does he have against Lyoto in this fight? He has arguably better stand or arguably better wrestling. Uh, definitely in his prime, he did. I don't know if he does now though. Stupid phone's going off. I'll get that later. Other than that, what does he have? I don't think. I think Machida's got the better ground game. I think Machida's got the better uh, stand-up game. I, I think he definitely has the better stand-up game. I think that well. 
his style maybe does play a little bit into Randy's game, which is, you know, the backing up style that he uses that is not popular with judges. I see him being on the finish, Randy. We've seen it before that when Machida gets it into his head that he has to finish you, he does. And I'm thinking the Rampage fight might have let that sink in. So going with Machida with a second or third round TKO stoppage. Now, I'm very interested in this fight. A lot of people are pooping on it, and that's Vladimir Machuchenko versus Jason Brills. A lot of people are saying it's going to be boring compared to what was left off the card, but I think the issue is that they wanted something big for the spike card, and that's Diaz McDonald. And nothing on the Facebook card I see being a big enough name, like uh, just name value, to replace this fight. Brills and Machuchenko, neither are humongous names, but I think a lot, a lot of... UFC fans know Matyushenko at least from his uh, the repetitive UFC Unleashed Andre Arlovsky episode where they have him killing Matyushenko and uh, his recent destruction at the hands of Johnny Bones Jones. Both these guys are wrestlers. Jason Brills, of course, uh, had the really good showing against Lil Nog, the surprising showing. You got two wrestlers going head to head. Both have stand up. I. I'm going with Vladdy by unanimous decision. I think his stand-up is more technically sound, although Burles has more power, I think. But when two wrestlers face each other, usually the better wrestler wins, or the one that can beat the other guy in the other areas. I think that's also Matyushenko. So, Vladimir Matyushenko, unanimous decision against Jason Burles. And what will be an interesting chess match. It won't be an interesting bar-pleasing brawl. Mark Hominick, Jose Aldo... Jose Aldo, third or fourth round TKO. I think he's just better all around. I think he's a better kickboxer, better, better, definitely better Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I think he's a better wrestler. Hominick has not really beaten anyone of note to get this title shot. Not that it hasn't been earned, because I can't really name a guy currently under UFC contract at 145. I, I'm desperately see, wanting to see fight Jose Aldo, and that's kind of all there is to that. St. Pierre versus Shields. Jake Shields, people want to believe he's got the tools to beat GSP, and it could happen. I mean, Matt Sarah did it, and that's he's got less tools than Shields does. But on the feet, I have to skid the edge to GSP. I think he's got proven striking that's good. I think every time we've seen G Shields have to rely on his striking, the Mayhem fight, the Dan Henderson fight, it, it's been terrible. In terms of wrestling, I believe Koscheck and John Fitch are better wrestlers, and they couldn't do anything with GSP. And people are going to say, well, he took down Dan Henderson. Henderson, for an Olympic level wrestler, doesn't seem to have the greatest uh, takedown defense in the world. I remember watching Vladimir or uh, uh, Medley Silva take him down uh, kind of at will. And uh, I think you need to go watch that fight if you think that he has, that taking him down is this momentous achievement. I see GSP being able to dictate where this fight goes. I see him having the better stand-up. Jake Shields, I don't think, really has anything for him from his back. If he can get on top of him, I think the fight becomes interesting. But I don't see it happening. Taking GSP by decision, because he's not been finishing people lately, he's been playing it safe, and this might be another you know case of that. So uh, hopefully that'll be a good fight, but I do not know about that. But the undercard, I'm, I'm liking the looks of it. Even the Aldo Hominick fight, I'm going to enjoy watching, even if I don't particularly have a lot of faith in Hominick's chances. Anyways, uh, that's UFC 129.